Hello again, and in this video, we're focusing once more on the VWAP variant of our five versions of the VWAP on the single indicator. And in this case, I've chosen McDonald's. I'm sure it needs no introduction. Uh, we've got the one minute, three minute, five minute across the top, and the 10 minute, 15 and 20 minute, because multiple time frames are an essential component of using this indicator, but they're also an essential component of trading and investing in general, but even more so here. And of course, everything is underpinned with our volume price analysis methodology as well. I think if we start down on the 20 minutes, so we'll just pop that one up full size. There we go. Um, just to refresh your memory, the VWAP indicator resets itself every time a new session begins. So here we are, we're resetting the VWAP here, and then it starts its calculations from that base point, if you like. The VWAP itself is the center line, and then we have our two envelopes, the upper envelope and the lower envelope. They are defaulted at one standard deviation, but you can adjust that accordingly uh, to any figure that you like, whether it's a whole number or a decimal version. You can go to 1.5, for example, um, if you so wish. Um, it was an interesting day yesterday for McDonald's. We had earnings over here the day before, um, and the earnings came in quite well. But as so often happens, we get a bit of a souffle effect. Uh, interesting the day before. This was yesterday's trading, as I say. And the stock tried to rally in the early part of the session, but really sold off quite strongly. And, and you can see it here. And again, it's very much down to, let's just widen this up a little bit. There we go. Um, again, you can see the, the outer envelope coming into play where we get up into potentially overbought, if you like, and oversold conditions down here. So these are potential areas where you might look at reversal opportunities and equally to the downside. But again, they will be confirmed with the volume price analysis methodology as well. But they are certainly the boundaries where one is always looking for uh, those potential opportunities. If you've ridden a stock higher up from a, a low point, perhaps, for example, if you rode this up from here, right there, we're up to top here. That's a point at which you might be considering that potentially it is over overbought and maybe an opportunity to reverse. What the, the volume is, is really confirming for you is that if you look at this widespread candle here, there's really not a ton of volume going in there. It's pretty lightweight, to be honest, and it looks a, a little bit out of balance. In other words, the volume, the price action has been has been pushed up by the market makers. Um, but the volume is really not in alignment with it. So it's it's uh, it's an anomaly. And then we get the next candle here. We've got a, a nice up thrust, not a ton of volume going in there. So it's certainly looking weak. Plus, we're up at the uh, the the upper envelope as well. So potentially an opportunity. And indeed, in this case, we go straight down and on down we go. And we get some nice rising volume in that trend. A little bit of a fallback there, but it does rise again as we get to the end of that particular trend. And the other reason I wanted to show you this as a, as a downtrend is that once we get beyond the outer envelope, then this really acts as resistance in the move lower. So what you will often see, as you indeed you do here, the market tries to rally against it and gets pushed lower. So it's very much acting as a resistance envelope, pushing the price down, pushing the price down, and on down we go until finally right at the close, we do get a, a surge in volume. As we often see, I've mentioned this on other videos, This uh, it's not parabolic, but you get this initial volume here. We then move into the session itself, the bulk of the session where we see very demonstrable volume, the highs and the lows, and then we tend to see this peak in, peaking in volume as we get towards the end of the session. So just the, really the takeaway from this is, once we move beyond these envelopes, either to the upside or the downside, they will tend to act as either support or resistance to whichever direction the uh, the trend is developing. So if we just drop that down, let's hop over onto one of the faster time frames. Let's look at the 10 minute over on the left here. And uh, very obviously similar sort of price action that you expect to see. Um, just move that up there. Nice rally, 
Um, but the volume is pretty flat. It's not really declined, not really advancing very much. It's it's very uniform. We got a two bar reversal here. We're up at the outer levels of the of the, uh, the upper envelope anyway. So potentially a situation where we're looking at, at an overbought situation, and then on down we go. We get some nice uh, nice confirming signals of weakness here. Attempt to rally at the VWAP itself and really not going anywhere particularly. And then as we develop into the trend, we get the rising volume, which really gives us confirmation that we are seeing a genuine move lower. And on down we go, two bar reversal at the bottom, and then we're into congestion and, and a minor rally at the end of the session. So that's on the 10 minute and just finally just up onto the five minute. Very similar picture, just pull that down into view, there we go. Really looks nice on trading view, this indicator is lovely. There we are. And as you can see, similar sort of situation, up to the outer envelope, and then we roll over, down onto the VWAP, and then away we go into this very, very solid trend lower with the uh, lower envelope really pushing down. And again, the key thing to look at in terms of the VWAP itself, if we just drop that down, you're always looking at this across the timeframes. What is my VWAP doing across the timeframes? Is it a consistent? Are we looking at a bullish trend? Are we looking at bearish trend or are we looking at congestion? And clearly, as you can see, when we look across the time frames, you know, it, it was a bearish trend through, across all the various time frames, right the way out to our slowest on the 20 minute. And again, it's a facet of the indicator that we always pay close attention to, which is why we use multiple time frames. Another reason for using multiple time frames, because we want to see what the VWAP indicator is doing across those time frames to give us the confidence to hold the position for the longer term. I use the term longer term in inverted commas. So I hope you've enjoyed this particular video. Lots more to come. We'll look at some ETFs and indices as well, and you'll see it works in exactly the same way. So thanks for watching. See you soon and bye for now.